Happy Election Day, everyone! I voted this morning, and when I left, I didn't mean to, but I got an extra sticker. And I think I'm going to keep this one, because hopefully this is going to be a really historic um, election, I'm hoping. It certainly has, the, the campaign certainly has been unprecedented. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about uh, and show you some, some of my new photo encaustics. Uh, these are the ones I did last week. I think I already showed you these. A couple of pinholes here, uh, the Hudson and the um, uh, San Francisco Bay and the Oakland Bay Bridge. That's from a pinhole and a goop and those other ones. But I did some more goops. I decided that I wanted to go through, and I'll explain later what goops are, um, go through the images that I had of those to create more because I had gotten some 5x7, not 5 by these are 8x10 panels. And first I, I actually coated a lot of them with the gesso. I talked about that last time. So I'm going to be doing more pinholes on these. Um, a friend of mine wanted one of Richmond and I have uh, that pinhole from Richmond. The smaller ones I'm going to be doing with um, pinholes of uh, monuments in DC. I'm going to redo a couple of these because I didn't like um, I didn't like the way they adhered to the last ones that I did of these two and, and, and I have these two done that I'm going to hang on my wall but I explained about the not having um, the boards coated so I'm going to do a couple of those that one and I'm not sure what else I'm going to do for the fourth one and that and I have to get some more of the the monument the DC ones um, as well but, but these are the goops um, I use these because uh, I can do double exposures, I can do long exposures, and the, the original images are made with this old Polaroid camera. And so I, I've used these images to um, make cyanotypes, but I've always wondered how I might use the images in their monochrome state and just the, with the blacks and whites and grays um, without just um, doing a, an inkjet or you see print or something and then matting and framing. I wanted something a little bit more to kind of go to, to kind of uh, trying to find my words to complement the textures that I get from the goops. So let me see if I can move this so that I don't have all the glare somehow here. Uh, so you can see, well you can see anyway the shininess of of these and this is one of the goops. I've done a series using like kind of like masks from my grandmother's um, and she's holding a little teapot there. It's like having Tea. And and I actually I outlined the little teapot with a just with a pen because it was it was a little bit um, too blended into the background because of all that texture. But I, I definitely wanted to imply the you know here let's have some tea sort of thing. And that's my that's my oak tree that's um, out front there. That's part of the background on that one. So that's that one. This is an older one of just some some calla lilies and I really like the way that ended up getting solarized. Um, here's another one of uh, sunflowers and and this too you can see the you can see the solarization where it looks like you've got positive and negative in the same image which is what solarizing sort of does. And then hide your eyes if you don't like nudes. They have a couple of nudes here. Um, with the clouds. I really like this one quite a lot. And then this one with um, the skeleton over 
uh, the double exposure of the of the nude. But they they turned out really well. They make nice pieces. To, you can either you can either hang them or um, you know you could just even set them up on a shelf like that. But I, I really like I really like how this these are turning out. I'm I'm enjoying the process of doing the encaustics. It's takes quite a lot of time to get through them because there's time coating the boards. I mean you can get pre-coated boards but why spend the money on pre-coated boards? It's not that hard to, to coat them. Um, and then getting the the prints, just these to adhere uh, using the, the 3M um, roll adhesive uh, and then and then the time it takes to to do a coat and then use the heat gun on it and fuse it and then do another coat and then let them sit and then shine them up. Um, so it's it's a little bit of a process to get them there but I'm I'm very pleased with the results and like I say I'm going to be doing more of the the pinholes of different kinds uh, maybe maybe some of my color hole goes as well and I've, I've ordered a bunch more boards too so I'm I'm amassing a collection of these not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing with them because um, I don't I don't have a venue at this point um, but we'll see we'll see so so the goops I'll show you what a goop is so when I take a picture with the the Polaroid camera it's the kind where you you actually it has a little tab on it and you pull it out and you wait you know whether anywhere is from um, uh, 25 seconds to two minutes uh, while it it develops in there and then you peel off you peel off the back of it these are like really old school Polaroids I mean these these are before they had the the integral film where you just it just came out and developed before your eyes um, so the one that I have right here you see that um, I actually don't know where I put the prints I think I might have put the prints already in a little in a little drawer because I don't use the prints I, I sometimes use the prints I scan them and use them for something else but most of the time I use the goops so so when I peel off the back I have this is it's, it's usually trash you you know you throw this away but it, it still has an image on it and the image is uh, typically like a negative or you can see how it's it's solarized there so I peel it off I use a blow dryer on this right away and scan it right away because the sooner I scan it the the less um, aberrations that are actually in the image as it dries you can see it gets I mean the texture is nice but too much texture can take away from the image itself and so I scan it and then I use uh, Photoshop elements because I don't I can't afford Photoshop <laughs> and I don't need Photoshop um, just a lot of times I will I will bring it up to size um, increase the size on it um, I'll, I'll have to invert it and then just just tweak the um, brightness and contrast so I so I get that image up real strong and then if if there's like dust specks or something like that I will I will go through and, and clean it up and then and then what I do for these for those all I all I'm doing is printing them on computer paper and then adhering them to the um, to the boards when I do uh, the um, the cyanotypes I, I need to create a negative on um, uh, a transparency in the in the inkjet printer. Um, so that's that's the scoop on on how I do how what what goops are <laughs> and how I've been using my goops um, just lately on making these new photo encaustic pieces, which uh, I'm loving. I keep thinking I'll do something more, I'll incorporate more elements onto the boards and do more of a collage kind of work, but the images are so strong on their own 
I don't really feel like doing that. The wax and the encaustic medium itself adds enough to it that I don't really feel like it needs it. So, so more work to be done and um, I'll talk to you again. Bye.